The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. sold American. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the tobacco auctions can see Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after a tour of military camps in Colorado, Missouri, Illinois, and New York, Jack Benny is back again in his little old home in little old Beverly Hills. Ah, California, the land of enchantment, where the fragrance of orange blossoms permeates the air, the land of eternal sunshine. <laughs> hmm, this must be last year's travel folder. <laughs> Well, anyway, it's nice to be home after eight weeks. Now, oh, Rochester. Rochester, where are you? I'm out here in the kitchen unpacking your last trunk. I'm packing my trunk in the kitchen? Isn't that a roundabout way of doing it? No, boss. I already put your suits back in the closet, your shirts back in the dresser, and now I'm putting the sandwiches back in the icebox. <laughs> oh, well, good. They'll come in handy on our next trip. You know, it's bad enough to take a few sandwiches in a valise, but boss, a trunk full. <laughs> Rochester, there's nothing like playing safe when you're on a train. I know, but when everybody else wanted to eat, they went to the diner. We had to go to the baggage car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop complaining. And it was so dark in there. <laughs> dark? Yeah, remember how you got mad when I thought your fingers were asparagus tips? <laughs> mad? What for? You didn't bite my fingers. No, fortunately, you stopped me just as I was dipping them in the mayonnaise. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I only packed enough food to last us for the trip. How many sandwiches have we got left? One ham, one cheese, and 385 peanut butter. <laughs> 385 peanut butter? Yeah, they didn't sell so good, did they? <laughs> Rochester, I wasn't selling sandwiches. There were a lot of people who couldn't get into the diner, so I gave them those sandwiches absolutely free. The sandwiches, yeah, but then you made me sing and charge them entertainment. <laughs> I only charged those that got up to dance. I don't want to hear any more about this. Oh, darn it. There's that sculptor from St. Joe. Still working on my statue. I wish he'd hurry up and finish it. Say, boss, I was just watching him make that statue, and he's got you standing there with your hand in your vest like Napoleon. Well, what's wrong with that? He's got your other two hands in your pocket. <laughs> Three hands? That's ridiculous. How many legs did he give me? I don't know, but if the racetracks were open, I'd bet on you. <laughs> well, he's the silliest guy I ever... There's the door. Maybe if I sent St. Joe a picture of me, they'd call that guy off. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, you know that sculptor from St. Joe who followed me to Denver? Yeah. Well, he followed me here, too, and he insists on finishing that statue. Well, what are you complaining about? I think it's a wonderful tribute. 
They got a statue of Jesse James there, too. Oh, fine. Comparing me to Jesse James. I never robbed a train in my life. No, but you put a dining car out of business. <laughs> Rochester, go back in the kitchen. Say, Jack, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I'll tell you when the rest of the gang get here. Why'd you come over so early, Mary? Well, I got a letter from Mom, and I wanted to read it to you. Oh, a letter from your mother? Well, what does the Lauren Bacall of Plainfield have to say? Here it is. Yeah. <coughs> funny letter, Mary? Oh, very funny. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, February 30th. February 30th? Mary, February only has 28 days. I know, but Mama doesn't think it's fair. <laughs> oh. Well, go ahead, read it. My dear daughter Mary, it certainly was exciting when you and Jack spent those few days with us on your trip east. It's too bad you had to dress in such a hurry that morning to catch the train. We barely made it. I didn't realize how much you had rushed until after you were gone. But don't worry, as I just mailed your toothbrush and Jack's hair. <laughs> Hmm. The one with the handle is the toothbrush. <laughs> no wonder I caught cold in Chicago. <laughs> Mary, darling, I must tell you the wonderful time we had in Jersey City last Saturday. Your father's doctor invited our whole family to attend his medical convention, and it was very exciting. The doctors held a beauty contest, and your sister, babe, was voted Miss... It shouldn't happen to Of 1945 <laughs> I know Babe could do it I knew... <laughs> Your brother Hillard has been reclassified And it looks like it won't be long now Because the draft board has a new system They take a phone book, pick a number, call it And if you answer, you're in <laughs> Well, the telephone is faster now, isn't it? Now I can understand those posters that say Uncle Sam needs you. He's not pointing, he's getting ready to dial. <laughs> hey, your mother's not kidding, you know? <laughs> Your cousin Bobby is now a corporal and is already overseas. He's the one who took his basic training at Montgomery Ward. <laughs> Mother's funny, you know. And now, in closing, Mary, I have some neighborhood gossip that will really surprise you. Guess who murdered his wife this morning? No other news, love, Mama. <laughs> Goody Ace will love that. Well, that's a fine way to end a. Come in. Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. I came as soon as I got your message. Well, I'll talk to you about it when the rest of the gang gets here, you know? Okay. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Larry. You glad to be home? Oh, I sure am. And to celebrate my homecoming, all my friends chipped in and threw a big party for me. How was it? Well, I don't know. I couldn't afford to go. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Say, Larry, did Mr. Harris send you the arrangement for your song for Sunday? Yeah, and I think it's pretty good. Would you like to hear it? Sure, kid. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear this. <laughs>
uh, so uh, that song sounded very good, kid. It certainly did, Larry. Thanks, Miss Livingston. Oh, Mr. Benny, here's a note I just found. It was left by Mr. Wimbish, the man you rented your house to when you went away. Well, I'll be darned. I forgot all about Mr. Wimbish. Let me see that. Dear Mr. Benny, if you remember the Mr. Wimbish you rented your house to, that's me. However, I lived in your house just one week and something very urgent happened. I had to go somewhere, and since they asked me in such a nice way, I couldn't refuse. Sincerely yours, Private Wimbish. <laughs> P.S. Profit by my experience. If the phone rings, don't answer it. <laughs> Mary, say, Mary, your mother must have been right about all this. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. I got your call. What's up? I'll tell you when Don gets here. Hello, Livy. <laughs> hello, Phil. Isn't it great to be home again? Yeah, this is what I kept dreaming about during all those cold weeks back east. Yep, getting back to good old California. Yeah, man, this is the only place for me. You said it, Phil. Come on in the other room. Okay, where shall I put my umbrella? <laughs> uh, right over there by Mary's boots. <laughs> Say, Phil, you look a little tired. Yeah, I am. All day long, I've been helping Frankie, my guitar player, look for a place to live. Now, did he find one? No, Jackson, and the poor guy's practically an orphan now that they're closing the bars at midnight. <laughs> oh, yeah. If he hadn't have been locked in twice, he wouldn't have gotten any sleep at all. <laughs> Well, look at I'm getting sick. All you do is worry about Frankie, your guitar player. It's all I hear. You know, it wouldn't hurt you if you settled down yourself and got a little more sensible there. What are you talking about, Jackson? I am sensible. Remember in Chicago when we met the fellow who draws the Dick Tracy cartoon? Yeah. Well, he said I was a very level-headed guy. He didn't say you were level-headed. He said you reminded him of Flat Top. <laughs> You level-headed. Oh, stop picking on me. Every time I open my mouth, you jump right down my throat. I'm not jumping down your throat. I'm just trying to give you a little advice, that's all. Well, I don't need any advice from you, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> I can take care of myself. Mr. Anthony, I demand a little more respect from you, Phil. Remember, I'm the boss. The boss, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah? Jack, that was a door buzzer. <laughs> Then why is Phil wiping off his chin? <laughs> is that the door? Come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Don. It's great to be home again, isn't it? Ah, uh, it sure is. Say, Jack, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I'll tell you as soon as Don gets here. I am Don. I mean Wilson. I'm Wilson. I'm mixed up. I'm the door buzzer. Please come in. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Now, look, kids, the reason I asked you all to come over is because there's something important I want to talk to you about. Your expense accounts for the trip. Fasten your safety belt, fellas. It's going to be a rough ride. <laughs> You're darn right it is. But looking over the expense accounts all of you turned in, you must think money grows on trees. Yeah, Jackson, and you've got enough to keep you in the shade for the rest of your life. <laughs> all right, Phil, since you're such a wise guy, we'll start with you. What's this item for $10 marked valet service? I had some suits pressed at the hotel. Hmm. I pressed my own suits. <laughs> now, Wilson, look at your account. What's this charge for $7 marked laundry? Well, it's just what it is. I paid $7 to have some laundry done. Hmm. With all that free soap and water in the hotel. <laughs> you know, I wash my own clothes. Now, Mary, what's this charge on your account? $15 NG. A new girdle. Let's see you wiggle out of that one. <laughs> all right. All... And Larry. Yes, Mr. Benny. Uh, look at this account you turned in. $3 for your hotel room. Now, isn't that kind of expensive? <laughs> well, well, I thought so, too, but that's what you charged me for sharing your bed with you. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, kid, I forgot. Huh? And, Wilson, what are these other entries on your account here? Oh, those are for lunch. Sunday, Monday, Friday, and Thursday. Lunch? Sunday, Monday, Friday, and Thursday? Yes, I just abbreviated it to LSMFT. Oh. Okay. And you know, Jack, I found out the most amazing thing. What is it, Don? LSMFT spelled backwards is T-F-M-S-L. 
Well, isn't that astounding? <laughs> what does it spell sideways, Don? I don't know about sideways, but always it's lucky strike means fine tobacco. That's very clever, Don. Now, getting back to your expense accounts, I want you kids to be more careful in the future, but I'll pay you off now. Wait here, I'll go into my vault and get the money. Please turn your backs. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. A fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. That's right. <laughs> uh, how have you been, Ed? Quite well, sir. Me too. Sure good to get back home, huh? Well, have you been away? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, for eight weeks. Uh, I went to New York. Oh, must be nice there now. No, 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 Ed. It's winter. <laughs> oh. Well, it's hard to tell in here. Yes, I imagine it is. Uh, take out your gun, Ed. I'm going to open the safe. Huh? Yes, sir. Let's see. The combination is right to 45. Left to 160. Back to 15. Then left to 110. There. <coughs> burglar a lot. <laughs> well, let's see. This ought to be enough money. What's well, so along, Ed? Bye, Mr. Benny. Say, Ed, I've been thinking. You must be kind of lonesome down here. Huh? No, no, I don't mind it. Well, nevertheless, I'm going to get you a radio. A radio? What's that? <laughs> well, it's a, a new thing that, that people enjoy. You know? Well, send one down. If I like it, I'll eat it. <laughs> No, no, Ed, it's nothing to eat, you know. Well, so long. So long, Mr. Benny. Well, here you are, kids. I've got the money. Don't hold it so tight. Look how white his knuckles are. <laughs> but just be glad you're getting it, that's all. Oh, say, Jack, while you were in the vault playing Monte Cristo, my maid, Pauline, called up. Yeah? She said they delivered my luggage from the station, but my brown grip is missing. Your brown grip? Yes, and I've got to have it. All my lingerie's in that bag. Well, gee, you better call up the station try and find it. No, I've got my car outside. I better drive down. Will you come with me? Okay, make yourselves at home, fellas. I'll see you later. Come on, Jack. Just a minute. It's locked. Come on, let's go.
drive so fast, Mary. Take it easy. It's awfully windy with the top down. Let's stop and put it up. But, Jack, fresh air is good for you. What if it does blow your hair around a little? Listen, sister, it blows yours around. It blows mine off. <laughs> oh, why don't you get rid of it? The way the wind keeps lifting it up, you look like you're reading a mystery story. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll put it in the glove compartment. Ooh, it's chilly. Well, leave it off. You'll get used to it. Anyway, here's the station. Yeah, there's a parking place right in front. I see it. There. Let's go in. Gosh, look at that mob in there. Gee, railroad stations are always so crowded. Now, let's see, where's the... Train uh... leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go over to the baggage room and find out about... Well, well, Bill! <coughs> Bill! Bill, you old scoundrel, I haven't seen you since the Kansas City Convention five years ago. Look, there must be some... What a that... brawl that was. <laughs> Remember Dolores, the hat check girl? She's still looking for you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. See, you've made Holy a mistake. Holy smoke, Bill. How you've aged in five years. Huh? <laughs> I told you in Kansas City that the kind of life you were leading would kill you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Look, and I'm not... Now, a... now, Bill, I'm not scolding you. It's your life to live as you please. But it's beginning to tell on you. Look, Why, I... you've even lost your hair. He didn't lose it. It's in the glove compartment. <laughs> Mary. Well, well, Bill. This must be your little one. Hmm? My, my, she's grown since I saw her last. <laughs> you know, young lady, I've known your father ever since... I'm not her father! <laughs> You're not her... I get it. Still the same old Bill. <laughs> well, don't worry, Bill, don't worry. If I see your missus, I won't say a word. Look, look, I'm trying to tell oh, you... Oh, by the way, are you still with the catch-all garbage can company? <laughs> catch-all garbage? Look, if you'll just listen for a minute... <laughs> look, fella. i never forget the time you sold the city of Syracuse 2,000 garbage cans. I... And the first time they were used, the bottoms fell out of every one. <laughs> what a stink! that cause. <laughs> Look, mister, I'm trying to tell you that I... Ah, I've got to run, Bill. I've got to run. I'm taking the train to San Diego. Look, I... Hey, don't... San Diego. Remember that night, Bill? <laughs> well, so long, Bill. I'll see you in Boston in 48. <laughs> a silly guy. I wonder who he thought I was. Bill. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on, Mary. There's the baggage room there. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> Look, Mary, I'll tell them it's in my suitcase. You know how they push women around. Oh, you better let me handle it, Jack. No, I'll show you how to get things done in a hurry. Well, okay, but I think you're wrong. Oh, say, mister. Yes? <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday when I got off the train, I missed a suitcase. Well, now that's a switch. Just this morning, a man got off a suitcase and missed a train. <laughs> look, 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 never mind the jokes. Look, the bag I'm looking for is brown alligator with a double handle. Uh, just a moment. I'll look for it. Okay. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. My husband is out to lunch. <laughs> Now, Mary... <laughs> now, Mary, don't worry about your grip. I'll get it for you. Uh, this is the only alligator bag I found. It has the initials M.L. on it. That's me, Mervyn Larson. Here, I'll take it. Ah, uh, not so fast, Mervyn. First, you've got to identify the contents. Uh, now, let's see. There, it's open. Now, I'll go through the... Say, this can't be your bag. Oh, yes, it is. Really, Merv, and you have such a deep voice. Now, wait a minute. Just, just look at this. Three pairs of panties, four pairs of stockings, two nightgowns. Now, look, smart guy, close that bag. I bid you old rascal up to your old drink. <laughs> look, will you please go away? <laughs> Good old Bill. 
Hey, wait a minute. Bill, you said your name was Mervyn. My name isn't Bill, is it, Mary? No, it's Jack. There. Jack, what happened to Mervyn? That's my name. Then this bag is yours. It is not. It's my bag. Well, who are you and what's your name? Her name is Bag and she wants her Mary. <laughs> I mean, her name is Mary and she wants her back. Then for heaven's sakes, what's your name? My name is Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bill. Look, go away, will you? Train leaving on track five for Anaheim. Well, I'm back from lunch, honey. <laughs> Azusa and Kuka <laughs> Munga. Oh, nuts. Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the past three years, I have seen the Red Cross in action both here and overseas. While we were on this last trip to New York and back, my gang and I visited many hospitals. And folks, if you could have seen what we saw, you'd give to the Red Cross so fast, their need for $200 million would be covered in no time. They're doing a job so big that they can only keep it up with our help. When we realize that the Red Cross now operates 727 clubs overseas, serves an average of two million meals a month, provides music, books, magazines, newspapers, and recreation to our men, that's something to be proud of. And how about the way they've been getting those packages into prison camps? All I can add, folks, is this. Let's do it now. Let's jar loose all the spare money we can and give it to the Red Cross. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here's my good friend, L.A. Speed Rig. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette, and Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 45, sold American. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. You said it. Why, sure. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Well, Mary, we finally got the right bag, so you don't have to, you have nothing to worry about, you know. I knew you could do it, Mervyn. You can stop with that Mervyn now. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mary. Didn't you drive past the house? I don't think so. Well, where are we? Just a second. I'll put up the periscope and see. <laughs> I told you we should have had the top up. Good night, folks. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.